Hi, in this video I will introduce you to formal specification in OpenJML. Let's first start with something simple. Create a function that finds the minimum of two numbers. The implementation is very simple. How do you think? What would be the appropriate specification for this function? First of all, it must ensure that the result is smaller or equal to both of those numbers. We can check it using an assertion. Many languages support assertions as a built-in feature. It's very disappointing that most programmers have no clue how to use assertions properly. Like, ask yourself, when was the last time you saw code that used assertions? Outside of unit tests, of course. Probably never. But assertions are one of those few language features that can be used for writing formal specification. Unfortunately, this is where the support for formal methods ends for most programming languages. And that's where OpenJML comes in. It allows us to take assertions to a completely new level. OpenJML is a language similar to Java, but is written entirely inside Java comments. Here, for example, we can turn this Java assertion into OpenJML assertion by prefixing this line with a comment like this. This way, the formal specification can be added to existing programs without changing their code. OpenJML will simply parse all those comments starting with at symbol. Now, this assertion is checked statically. OpenJML exited without any errors, so it means that our code is correct. Isn't it amazing? Instead of running unit tests on a few test cases, OpenJML mathematically proved the correctness of our code for all possible inputs. It's like running an infinite number of tests and passing all of them. Now, what's even better is that we can use this assertion to later make even more complex proofs. For instance, let's use this minimum function to find the smallest element in an array. Let's try to add formal specification for this one. We can do it analogically to the way we did it before. Let's see what OpenJML will say about this one. Unfortunately, it cannot prove it. Now, the problem with this code is that it's easy for us humans to understand, but not so obvious for a computer to prove it automatically. We can make our specification more explicit. We just need to take this assertion and turn it into a post condition. We can do it as follows. We just use ensures instead of assert. And now OpenJML will automatically know how to use it to prove this assertion. Let's try again. Ah, so now it worked. We can also add similar post condition to this function. However, this time, instead of just two numbers, we have entire array of numbers. So we would like to prove that the result is smaller than every single individual number in the array. This will require a special keyword from OpenJML. As you can see, we used the for all keyword to say that for every integer i that is between zero and the ri length, this must hold. OpenJML will understand how this quantifier works and it will know how to use it in proofs. Unfortunately, OpenJML is not able to prove it automatically. You must be aware that SMT solvers have one strong limitation. The name SMT stands for Satisfiability Modulo Theories. They check satisfiability, not refutability. In other words, they check if theorem is correct, but they can't tell if the theorem is incorrect. Instead, SMT solvers will just give up and tell us that they can't find the proof for a given theorem. So very often, you must figure it out on your own. Why OpenJML cannot find proof for my code? Is it because the specification isn't detailed enough? Or is it because the code is wrong? Remember that if your code is wrong, then of course you cannot prove its correctness, no matter how hard you try. In this case, we can see that the code is correct, but OpenJML cannot prove it, because we have a loop. All loops need to be annotated with their invariants. It will be a lot easier to annotate it if we replace this for loop with one that looks like this. Now we have access to the index, and we can use it in our annotations. So the first thing that we need to tell in our specification 
is that this index will always be between zero and ri length. Now it's very important that i can actually be equal to the ri length because when we leave the loop i will be equal to length. As long as i is less than this length the loop will continue but as the loop leaves i will be equal. So we need to take this into account. Now the most important annotation will look as follows. Here we say that for every index j that is less than i, the number at index j will be greater than the smallest so far found number. And as the iteration progresses, i will get larger and larger and eventually j will cover the entire array. But at every single step in the iteration, we will only know that the smallest number is the smallest only among the numbers seen so far. Now you can see that OpenJML exited successfully and it proved everything. That's great. But it might not be entirely clear to you how these loop invariants work. Let's try to rewrite it to be even more explicit and so that we can see even more details. So every for loop is nothing more than a while loop that looks like this. The way OpenJML treats those invariants is that it takes whatever we write here and it later turns it into assertions. First, it knows that inside the loop body, this condition must always hold true. So it will put it in the assertion. Then it will put our loop invariant. So the end result will look like this. And what OpenGML tries to prove now is that by the end of the iteration, this loop invariant still holds. The exact same thing will be done for the second invariant. Lastly, we need to take this i and put it before the invariant so that this index is accessible here. Now we can check if it really works. So as you can see, our code is correct. I hope you liked this video. In the next one, I will show you how to use preconditions and recursion. See you soon.